What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So this week we're going to check out an extension that allows you to create accurate wires and cables inside of SketchUp based on length. So this extension was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing on this channel, um, maybe you want to support, maybe you want to vote on the extension we cover every week, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this extension is called the wire tool and it is for drawing accurately hanging wires and ropes. You can find it in the SketchUp extension warehouse and I will link to it in the notes down below. Um, the extension developer is Aurelius. So if you want to download this and follow along, you can do that. I will note it is not marked as compatible with SketchUp 2020, but it seems to be working fine in my SketchUp 2020. So the way that it works is it's actually a really simple extension. You can find it once you install it by going to the extensions menu and going down and finding the option for draw wires. And so when you click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to pop up this little uh, this little cursor icon that looks like a um, it looks like a wire. But basically, the way that this works is you click between two points, and what it does is it uses the distance between those two points in order to create a hanging wire. And so it's fairly simple, but there's some things you can adjust in here to make it do different things. So you've got two options for adjusting the, basically the length or the bulge of the arc between these two points. So the first is you can set this to do this by percentages. So for example, if I was to click on the center point here, and then click on the center point here, you can see how in the lower right hand corner, this shows that we have a distance of 10 foot 4 inches between these two points. However, if I was to type in a percentage, so let's say I was to type in 140 and then a percent sign and hit the enter key, and uh, then I, let's go ahead and move our mouse off of this point and then move it back, you can see how my preview gets a lot longer. So what this is doing is this is taking the length between these two points, it's multiplying it by 140% and it's drawing an arc between those two points based on that. So you can use this in order to set um, different amounts of hanging. So for example, now let's type in a value of 110% on this one and hit the enter key. Now if I mouse off of it and I mouse back, you can see how what this is doing is this is hanging at a value of 110% instead, of, uh, instead of 140 that we had in here before. And so in addition to this, you can also set these by length. So let's say for example, I have this power line model in here and I'm gonna click this first point. You can see how this gives me a distance of 25 feet. Well, if I was to type in a value, so let's say I typed in a value of 35 feet and hit the enter key, and then we'll move our mouse off of this point and move it back. You can see how this gives me a line that has a length of 35 feet. So if I was to click on this curve, and you can see how it's not 100% precise. So in order to make this work, this actually went to 35 feet, one eighth of an inch, but it's gonna be really close. So you can also dictate the distance of this hanging line. So if we were to run this again, and for this one, let's say it's not gonna hang quite as far. So this gives me a distance of 25 feet. Let's say this is going to hang maybe 28 feet. So I'm gonna type in 28 feet hit the enter key, notice this tool is still active when I do this. And then I'm just gonna move my mouse off and back. And the only reason I'm moving my mouse off and back is because it updates the preview so I can see how long this is. So for example, if I wanted this to be 40 feet, you can see I can do the same thing or when I move my mouse, I can actually preview this while this tool is still alive. So I'm gonna put this back to 30 feet hit the enter key and then click on this point right here. So you can see how this allows you to really quickly create these hanging wires between different points. And then one other function this tool has is it also has the ability to dictate the number of segments in your line. So for example, you may want this to be a really smooth curve. Well, right now, if I click on these, you can see how it's creating them with 24 segments inside of the curve. Well, let's say that I wanted either more or less segments. So let's do less first. So if I was to go to extensions, draw wires, and then click on this point, and then type in a value of, let's call it six for right now. So we're gonna type in six, S, make sure to put the S after it and hit the enter key. And then notice how this adjusts so that it creates a line with only six segments in it. So while before we had a line with 24 segments in it, this one has six segments in it. So it's a lot of, um, while it's blockier, it's also less edges in here. 
stuff, you're creating a lot of different curves, and this will get especially important if we create a tube along this, which we'll talk about in a second. But you can see how you can use this to create higher or lower, lower polygon things inside of this model. So let's do this the other way now, where if we were to run this, and now let's single click, and then let's type in a value of 48S. So make sure to type in the S after the value and hit the Enter key. Well, notice now, if you look at this from the side, this is a very smooth curve, where it wasn't really before. So now if we type, or if we click in here, and you look at this wire, this new wire that we created gets created with 48 segments in it. So this is a smoother curve because it has more segments in it. Now one thing I will note is I would recommend staying fairly low, keeping your edge count on these kind of low, mostly because these are going to be details in your background. So you're not gonna pay a whole lot of attention to these, so you don't need to create a whole bunch of different segments and things that SketchUp needs to render out. Um, so there's really not a reason to go super high segment count on these, so just be aware of that when you're creating these. And then one other thing I want to point out is, so you can use this tool in order to create these wires, and if you're just creating a view inside of SketchUp, um, no big deal. These look great. Um, you know, you could put these anywhere in your model. They obviously visually indicate where your wires would be. However, if you were to do something like rendering this out, these wouldn't show up because they're single edges. And so what I would recommend for something like this, and I wouldn't recommend doing a lot of this because it can add a bunch of geometry to your model, but what you can do is there's an extension, which I will link to a video about in the notes down below called Lines to Tubes. What Lines to Tubes does is that converts your arcs into cylinders. So what you can do is you can set this to follow you on curves, create groups for your different tubes. You can also set the diameter and the number of segments in the circle that it uses in order to create this tube. Then you can click on OK. And what this would do is this would create a little tube inside of your model. So now, if we were to render this out, this would actually show up in here as an actual line. So you can use this to quickly add geometry in here, but I would say only use this in areas where you absolutely need to do it because you don't want to create a whole bunch of extra geometry. Like there's a bunch, if I was to, if I was to open up this tube that we created, you can see how it has 440 entities in it. So that's 440 either edges or faces that SketchUp has to render with its 3D engine. So you don't want to create a bunch of high polygon geometry in here. You don't want this to be like a, you know, have a precision of like 48 sides and all of that, because that could create a lot of geometry and you can't even see it when you zoom out. But if you do need to create this, that extension is a good way to do that. And so that has a lot of fun applications. Like for example, let's say I wanted to add some wires really quickly between these two buildings. I could just pick points on these buildings. And then type in a percentage in order to quickly add hanging wires. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Obviously a fairly simple extension, but I think there's a lot of fun applications that can go along with this. Um, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Um, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.